Hello, guys. Welcome uh, to our lecture. So, so what are we gonna do today, guys? So, actually, last week I uh, I I I I, I uh, understood that you prefer that I will t I will explain and you will listen and not uh, like I so I suppose that we will uh, act that you will ask questions. So uh, today. I will do, I uh, actually, I plan today to give some more advanced topic, but I want to synchronize us for uh, basic, uh, no, uh, basic uh, deep learning uh, uh, approach, a uh, basic machine learning approach. And then we will actually, I will cover uh, the th things that you should know and I will do, uh, and I will uh, emphasize the things that I think that they are important. And uh, after this lecture, actually, we will be online uh, about uh, your uh, knowledge of uh, basics, machine learning classifiers, until uh, and multi, uh, actually until convolutional neural networks. Okay, so we will uh, we will align your knowledge until uh, 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 for uh, classification, supervised classification, until convolutional uh, approach. Okay, next lecture I will give you advanced lecture on convolutional neural networks from the start until the sort of, until uh, we will cover all all uh, all uh, kinds of convolutional neural networks. Uh, we will talk about the uh, common topologies and uh, uh, we will emphasize the difference between them. Uh, Again, it will be from Linet from uh, the pro pro proposed uh, for by Alakun. And we will end uh, by efficient net. This is uh, today's SOTA for image net classification. So this is our program. Uh, any questions before I start? Okay. So I'm starting. So this lecture is uh, all the lectures we are recording and I'm going to to upload. Uh, uh, to the web course. Okay, good. So, uh, linear. So linear models. Okay. So we will talk about. Uh, let's let's start uh, uh, talk about linear and nonlinear models for multi for multi class uh, classification. Uh, if you have questions, please raise your hand and ask. And uh, I'm actually using chat. It's very. It's not very. Uh, you, it's not useful because I, I, I should uh, do a bre uh, breaks for, for, for this, and it's actually, it's, uh, I, I can focus on two, two things, okay? So pl please raise your hand and ask. We also, we, we are a pretty small class, so we can handle your question online. Okay, so, what, uh, so I, I will cover in briefly overlay over your linear models, okay? So we will uh, cover uh, linear linear classifiers. We will we will expand the linear classification of one class to multi-class. We will talk briefly about variance and bias trade-off. This trade-off, actually, it's the basic trade-off of all uh, machine learning algorithms and deep learning algorithms that, that we have, and we should be aware what it is and how and uh, Actually, it's 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 the base, it's the design rule of uh, all training process, of each training process, and then we'll talk about multilayer net neural network, uh, neural, net, net neural networks, and back propagation. Again, I will take, give you some quantifier uh, example how to calculate the gra the gradients uh, from the end to the start. Yeah, make sure the back prop flow, and uh, actually you will have. Uh, Homework and uh, uh, also we've talked about it, about it in the tutorial. Okay, so lin linear models. Uh, so suppose you have uh, some linear classifier, you have data, and then you you want to you have some function f. You want to predict your actually your uh, output table by a given data. Okay. So uh, basic uh, classification is actually a sign function. So we have FW, so we want to find, find some approximation function. 
from the from your uh, for your for, for, from a given input to uh, your predict your output. Okay, so the general recipe is actually we need to uh, define some loss. Defining this loss, uh, 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 it's empirical loss, and then we actually by uh, finding the difference between the empirical between the our our prediction to our uh, true label, we want to minimize this. Loss, okay, so this is empirical loss. So we have two uh, in each loss actually uh, have two uh, parts. First part is it's your debt, uh, it's your loss on your data. So it's what I actually started to talk about. It's the difference between your prediction and your real data. And the, and the, other, uh, the other part of this loss is the regularization. The regularization is actually that you give some uh, constraints or on distribution on uh, values of your weighting or your, of your, on your parameters. Why we do it? It's actually, uh, we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of uh, explanation why regularization is works, but I will talk about uh, it a bit later because uh, when I will talk about a tra trade of variance bias, but regularization actually, uh, we add regularization for, uh, uh, for uh, reducing the overfitting. And what is overfitting? Uh, I will talk about it a bit, a bit, a bit later. Okay, so let's talk, let's. So we want to, again, we use our systems, uh, we, we use uh, stochastic gradient descent. I will not go more, more deeper on, the, on uh, why, we don't, why stochastic gradient descent, we have a lecture about it. Uh, difference optimizers, okay? So stochastic gradient descent is most common, is one of the common uh, optimizers for uh, calculating your uh, gradients and making your optimization. Uh, optimization. So the design rule is actually we have our we have our weights. So we uh, update rule we update each uh, epoch uh, our weights uh, by calculating the gradient with respect to 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 the uh, output data, and then we actually need is actually learning for, for learning weight parameter. So it's actually the step. Okay, so so it's actually we can control the step of uh, or uh, the the uh, how how much. Uh, you can increase the, the, uh, uh, the step rate of your updating parameters, okay? So regularization, so I will cover really in very brief um, most of uh, the models, uh, linear models, linear regression, no regularization, data loss is actually uh, a two loss, the difference between our uh, pre predicted uh, value and our real the real value. So uh, the, so actually the interpre interpretation of how we see it is actually we ass we assume uh, one minute yeah so we assume uh, log likelihood as assuming on the posterior distribution of y depends on x is normal okay uh, this problem is a convex loss. Uh, Convex loss, uh, as we know from theory of optimization, is very easy to optimize, um, unlike uh, non-convex loss. Non-convex loss, and this is actually the case that we most of the uh, 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 most of the time that we have in the deep learning. So the cons of the so the the process that it is convex loss, the uh, it's actually the uh, good things that we have in linear model. The 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 cons, the bad thing. It's, it's actually uh, this kind of, this model is very sensitive for, for the outliers. So in, in case you have some outlier, okay, so you can actually, your loss is very dependent on this outlier. And uh, it means that, uh, if, uh, that if outlier can actually uh, very, uh, it's, 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 it's have strong uh, uh, correlation between the outliers and the behavior of the, of the loss and it's, uh, can uh, ha can hurt can harm us uh, for for making training for for getting good results on the actually of, of, on our training. Okay, so lo logistic regression. So logistic regression is actually a extension of, the, of linear regression. So logistic regression is we, we in the simple case we want to classify a, a binary classification. So we have two or false. 
So uh, we have here the uh, prob uh, the probability on uh, if you if actually we have two options. So uh, the the uh, the the uh, pw when uh, we assume that y uh, our our output is one, the depend on x is actually uh, it's actually uh, this function the sigma uh, uh, multiplied by omega t x and we can again when this sigma it's uh, we can expand we can expand it uh, and for one uh, divide one uh, exponent x uh, minus omega x okay and uh, in the when your uh, when you we, we define that y is minus one uh, depend on x so we have actually the uh, opposite of this of this function so this is actually our option so actually uh, our uh, our function is uh, a logistic regression function. Uh, loss function is that is uh, re reacts like this. It's actually uh, some sine function. Yeah, Sig sigmoid function. Sorry. Okay. So regularization on the logistic regression. We we also uh, we also don't have some regular uh, uh, any regularization. Uh, so our data loss is uh, mi minus uh, log on uh, the, the uh, posterior di distribution, and uh, actually it's negative log, log likelihood uh, uh, when we assume that uh, we have Gaussian class dis uh, conditional distribution when uh, our conditional distribution is uh, equal to one. Okay. So th this was the logistic and regression linear regression. It was simple. It was uh, actually uh, uh, machine learning uh, simple classifiers. They are very uh, the pro their pros actually they are very easy to compute. Their cons they can uh, classify very uh, hard distributions and they uh, assume uh, and they are very sensitive to uh, um, outliers in the data. So uh, perceptron, perceptron is actually the basic, uh, the basic model that uh, we will uh, continue to 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 deep neural networks, yeah, or uh, move, uh, we will add nonlinearity and it will it, and it will be uh, neural networks. Uh, so our that our loss on the perceptron is uh, hinge loss. So uh, it means that we have a classifier correction uh, when we uh, correctly classify uh, our uh, our uh, uh, we predict the correct classification our our loss is zero and if if, not, if we not predict co correctly the, uh, if if not so we have some loss here yeah? so we have linear uh, our losses increase of course and we want to of course our uh, Goal is to minimize the, the loss. Yes, okay. guys. Anyone with me? Uh, are you clear? Uh, are, uh, it 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 it, uh, it is clear for you. Uh, some feedback. Yes. It's clear. Yes. It's very good. Again, you should you should you should uh, have some familiar. You 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 should you, you should be familiar with the stuff. But I want to align. This lecture is really aligned for, for, for all the guys that have uh, ML, uh, uh, ML requires prerequisites or uh, and the, the guys that have no uh, ML prerequisites. So support, support vector machine or SVM, uh, it's also a li li linear model, uh, uh, linear model uh, classifier, common linear model classifier. So we have in this classifier, we have regularization because we want to be we want to be some boundaries. We want to uh, uh, that we, our weights will be uh, boundaries between uh, uh, some uh, small uh, values. Uh, our loss function is actually hinge loss. So the hinge loss is uh, SVM hinge loss is uh, defined like max between zero and one uh, minus the prediction. Okay. So it actually for for. Uh, the, the, in this case, the, the uh, right classification is depend is uh, uh, give us zero loss, and from uh, uh, from here, we actually we will start uh, our uh, increasing of, of our loss. So, so can I ask yeah. a question? 
Where do I see the regularization in the function itself? Here. As opposed to one function earlier without the regularization? I didn't see the difference. Uh, I, again, can, can you ask again, please? I, 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 can you, you add, elaborate? You add the regularization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have two, two, two parts. Yes, you, 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 we don't see those here. Uh, we don't see it here, but we have two parts. The first part is the regularization. The, the second part is on, on the loss. Okay. Okay. Can yeah. I, 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 I do not explicitly wrote it here, but this is two parts. Okay. The loss. Yeah. You ask me why I'm why I'm not adding here the the first part. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, so I, I add, plus, you can see, plus regularization, okay? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. So, great. So, uh, why we do it? So, let's, inter so uh, we want to maximize, we want to maximize margin while minimizing constraint evaluation. Yeah, this is why we have here the, our margins, so we want to maximize to maximize our, mar our margins of the classifier. We, we, we want to correctly, uh, that most of the samples will be correctly cl classified and we want to minimize the areas that are actually between, uh, are actually be between our two options. Yeah, because if we want to, cl to classify two options, we don't want uh, samples that will be un uh, unclassified. Okay, great. Okay, so stochastic gradient uh, updates. So again, in linear regression, this uh, actually works like that. In uh, a logistic regression, uh, this works like uh, that because we have here the, our sigma. And uh, this is actually, yeah, and this is our update rules. And for perceptron, we have our, of course, we have our update on, uh, on this one, yeah. And SVM. Uh, we we have a parameter on the on the, the w so we also add some parameter on w it's our actually uh, localization rate and uh, the same is on the uh, and this this part it is actually uh, or depends on our, on our loss okay so it was one it uh, all these cases was actually for classification, binary classification, when we have two classes, or we, when we want to distinguish between true and false. What happened when we want to extend our talk to multi-class, multi yeah? So we want to, to, to train classifiers that, that, that just will be able to, class, to classify more than, than, than one uh, sample, uh, ob object or, uh, okay, so again, we have, here, uh, example of uh, classification of we have actually one, two, three, four, five classes. Yeah, so we want to to be able to classify to give a prediction and of one of these five, five classes correct. So uh, the good uh, actually we have a few options to do this stuff. Uh, oh, the first option is to, to uh, it's actually what we talked in, in, in machine learning course. We, we can classify, we, we, we can have uh, uh, for each class cl cl classifier. So this classifier will actually have the, the he minimized the hypothesis uh, true, uh, the, null, uh, the hypothesis, null, uh, the null hypothesis on uh, the specific class. And we have a few classes, and each class, each classifier is actually uh, in charge on classifier uh, spe one specific class. The other option is to have one classifier that can, uh, that will have a few options of classifications and all, each of these options will be actually interpreted as different class. Okay. So uh, we will briefly discuss what the difference is. So actually, let's start. So we have Y, it's actually our output of few classes. So we can, we want to learn class scoring functions of one until C. We want to classify X to class predicted. So it's actually Y field, it's Y prediction. So we want to, uh, that it will be argmax, uh, uh, 
maximum uh, argument of the, the of the classifier uh, of our functions on uh, of uh, of of our input. Okay, Good. great. So uh, let's start with multi-class per per perceptrons. Okay, so. Uh, in, in, in multi-class perceptrons, our function FC is depends on uh, some matrices uh, WC that each of uh, the rows will be actually the values of uh, of uh, given of each class. Okay, and actually we want we have inputs, we have some perceptron here, and we will uh, uh, we want to find which each of the classes uh, of which of the classes it's uh, predict okay so uh, we have input image cat we have three rows each each of the rows is actually a different class so the first was cat the second is dog and the third is sheep so uh, so we're taking our weighted our, our waiting uh, parameters matrices we are multiplying on, on x we are uh, adding bias biases uh, against it's uh, more, more it's bi biases uh, 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 the, uh, 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 the it's vector uh, depends on the, on the number of, of the of the classes yeah and then we have actually our predictions so or we have we, we call it scores so for now you can see that the, the score of uh, that we have uh, for uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, all uh, after all the, this multiplication we have maximum score for dogs okay so actually, if from this from uh, this uh, sample, we can predict that why why uh, why why uh, tilde is a dog, okay? So if uh, there is a dog, no, it, it, this is a cat. Okay, great. So what loss should be used for multi -class, for multi class classification? Yeah. So now. For now, we have actually all predictions, and now we, we we need to have some update rules for uh, uh, learning this this uh, model to classify to 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 classify correctly. Okay, so we can use uh, for x and y. Uh, let the loss be sum of hinge losses associated with all incorrect classes okay so we're taking all incorrect classes that that we have and then we actually uh, build our 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 loss and we want to minimize it by minimizing it, it we want to actually minimize all the incorrect scores by uh, giving more, most prediction on the correct on the correct score, uh, class of course okay so this is actually the uh, how the, the hinge loss is uh, works. So we have gradient with respect to y uh, i. So we make rec recall on uh, uh, with respect to, to, to max, and then then we have uh, this is actually our uh, uh, gradient. So we want to mean to me to uh, actually minimize the, the uh, 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 negative local likelihood of uh, all the sums. Okay. Great. So the update rule for each class will be for each row for for for, for, for each row will be this this one. So it's our matrices uh, transpose xi uh, when it's when, when it's more than when, when it's more than the uh, matrices depends on one y i. Okay. So we have two update rules here. So the first update rule will be on our y i and the, the second one will be depends on our matrices of our classes. Okay. So now I have now we have a good question. I don't know. So in this equivalent uh, C independent one vs all classification. So now we will see. Uh, the difference between uh, uh, if we if we uh, uh, class if we train independent classifiers to predict uh, each class, or we we have one classifier, and what happens to our update rule? So we have input image and we have scores. 
Okay, now uh, le let's talk about the, the case when we have independent uh, independent classifiers. So what will happen for the uh, what will be happen for the classifier that uh, uh, classifier cl classified cap? Suggestions? Increase, decrease? Increase. Hmm? Increase. So yes. someone someone thinks that it is an increase. Who thinks another another options? You have three options: increase, decrease, or, or doesn't change. Okay, so someone thinks it decrease, and the, for dogs and sheep and sheep. If it's independent, then I guess independence. Okay, yeah, it's independent classifiers. Each classifier is it's uh, each classifier is a classifier uh, can. Uh, in charge on the specific class. Um, do we train the the dog and sheep classifiers or only the cat classifiers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We classify. We do. We uh, train all these classifiers with various with various examples. So cat goes up and dog and sheep goes down, I guess. Okay. Other options. Uh, wouldn't the cat stay the same or the dog and sheep go down? Uh, can you repeat this? I said, wouldn't cat score stay the same because uh, single class perceptions don't update when they see the right answer while dog and sheep see a wrong answer and go down? Yeah, so so you think that cat will be not change? Uh, cat score will be, will be not change, yeah? And the, the dogs and, and, and dog and sheep will be down, yeah? Yes. So, do nothing, of course, guys, because uh, you have no, the, uh, you, you classify it right. So the classification, this is actually cat. So the classifier, you, you should not update the classification of the right sample. And the, the dog and sheep will be decreased. Yeah, so uh, I don't know, I, I don't know who, uh, who told the right uh, question, the right answer, but you, you're right. Okay. Okay. So, can you explain again why the cat won't go up? I thought we're training it. Because okay, you okay. So you have you have prediction on the you you have pre prediction you pre you predicted uh, you have some prediction. So so this prediction is you predicted cat. Okay, it's right. It's it is it is cat. So the class the classifiers that predict cat should not be. Uh, he did right pre pre prediction. His loss is zero. Why he should? Why he should? Uh, why he should to update it? Understand? How do? You, what do you mean by? Okay. It's right. You, you, you had a, okay. You had okay. Classifiers work by hypothesis. Hip, hip, hypothesis. Okay. Your hypothesis. Your you have some score. So this score is actually mean uh, you. You have. You 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 predicted that it's cat, okay? So you have no your loss function is, is actually for for this classifier will give zero because you correctly classified, okay? Why you should decrease the score next time? You will not increase the score because you you already you already did it right, okay? What? Again, okay. How how classifier works? You 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 learn you you uh, when you have your your classifier have, have the hypothesis. If you write, it's it means that he did, he did correctly. You will not change the score because your parameters are not tuned. Okay. And if you wrong, you should you should you have loss. Your loss is more more than zero. Then you need to accordingly decrease or, or increase your score for depend for for given sample. Okay, because this classifier, he his each each classifier he have one option. His duty is to classify this class. Okay, it's not relatively to other classes. It's it's absolute. Okay, in 
in the relative option, we should, uh, we will talk about it in, uh, when we talk for, uh, in, 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 in a second, we, when we talk on the multi-class, okay? So if I do it independently, what would count as uh, wrong for cat, let's say? Because to me, it just seems so that any number that would come out, in this case, 65.1 would be right, if it's independent? No, no, of course. Okay, okay, so actually you have something. Okay, so this. Okay, so you are you are, you are actually asking uh, about some thresholding, yeah? What what the thresholding? Yeah, what's confusing to me is uh, why do we? Yeah, so so this is big numbers. It okay? is so, right. So in this so, case. So so I will do, if you will. Okay, so this number will give you if you if you if we will talk about the if we will. Uh, 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 take this number to the loss, to the real loss, you will see that th this number is actually give a loss zero, okay? Okay. So, if the, th these numbers will, will give you very, very small loss, relatively zero. If the number, if the, if the score was uh, around zero, okay, or, or, or negative, it will be also negative. So it will be, again, we will, uh, we can, uh, you know, we can uh, plug it in the, into the loss, or uh, you can or on your on, on your loss that, that on your huge loss and and see what the what actually the loss the, trust me that these numbers are uh, give you uh, around zero loss okay okay thank you now 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 you're okay with this if 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 you you don't need to have a really intuition okay you only you only you know you 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 assign it to the loss and and then you check okay okay great other questions I have a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, so adapted rule, you have uh, WYI plus eta XI. And then uh, below you say uh, the score is decrease. So it means that the eta is a negative number? No, eta is, eta is also, uh, eta is always positive number. So eta. how does it decrease? So it's a decrease, okay. So you're, you're talking about, you're, you're, you're you're talking about here, yeah? No, so, the one above. The WYI, yes. Yeah, but you have you have your gradient, yeah? You don't see... You, ah, okay. Okay, t t yeah, it could be... Okay, so here we, we assume that it's on, not only learning grade. So it's it, here we, we assume that, it, that it's negative number, okay? Okay. Negative number. Yeah, it, because it, it, it's, it's, it's not only the learning grade, it's learning rate uh, plus the gradient, okay? Yeah, yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most cases in deep, when we talk on the convolutions, we will talk about eta like a positive number, okay? But here, here it's, it can be also positive and, and also negative. Okay, so now let's talk about the multi-class and what the difference. The, so when we have one classifier that should be the, where the should classifier a few classes, so what will happen with the what will happen with the cat score here, guys? Do nothing, increase or decrease? What do you think? Shoot. Anyone shoot some it intuitions? Should what? It should increase. It should increase. What will happen to the to the dog score? It should decrease. And what will happen to the sheep score? Um, nothing. It's a little bit tricky. Think about it. If it's low enough, then it should not change. Okay, it's not lost. No enough. It's not. It's it's lost relative. It's it's a, 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 if it's relatively small number. Okay, relatively to other to other predictions. Okay, so what is what? So shouldn't change, I guess. So what we see should on the change, yes. So uh, what we see here, we see here that in, in the multi-class uh, classifier, we have most prediction, the, the uh, highest prediction for dog, okay? Yeah, guys, for dog, but it's, that it, it's not true. You should decrease uh, the multi-class uh, uh, perceptron to, to, for, for a dog uh, classification, yeah? You should increase the cat classification, decrease the dog classification, and you doesn't matter about sheep because you he all he already classified the sheep as the smallest one. Yeah. 
Yeah, seems okay. Uh -huh. Can you explain exactly under what conditions the sheep score would decrease? Of course. So let's take an assumption. So, so we have cat. Yeah, this is our sample of cat. We should our multi-class classifier, classifier. The first value that is in charge on the classific on the prediction of the cat should be the highest from the all uh, from the all option from the all scores. Okay. It, it's not mm -hmm. happened. It's not happened here. Yeah, it, what what our classifiers do? He thinks that he thinks that he uh, uh, absolutely uh, he thinks that it's most probably dog. If not dog, it's maybe cat. But he it's if not cat, it's a sheep. But again, the difference the, the gap is uh, so he he's most he he thinks that it's 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 not sheep because he give very small probability. Or score for for the sheep, okay. So that that it's we already know that our classifier knows that it's not, it's not sheep. We should not the we should not change the the, 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 the entry because we already classify we, we know to misclassification sheep. We know that it's not sheep because uh, and, and it means that the distribution we know to uh, class uh, if we we have distribution of sheep, yeah, of sheep class. We know how to distinguish this, this, this distribution by this classifier. So we will decrease the score of any class whose score is higher than cat, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So say we would start with, I don't know, with cat 101 and dog and sheep 100, then nothing would be unchanged? Uh, sorry, so we, you, uh, cat 101, yeah, and dog and sheep a bit below. So uh, supposedly the classifier is right, but the differences are very small. So we do yeah, 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 yeah. In this of so uh, in this with this uh, uh, using this loss node, it will be not changed. Okay, okay. it will be not changed. You have some. We will. We want to. You you ask very good question. Uh, please, uh, what's your name? You have. You have. You have. Actually, it's uh, the question of all the course. Okay, because we, we want classifiers that will do something that will, uh, that will actually give the gap. Uh, we want to, to, uh, to enlarge the gaps. Yeah, we want, I see, I see. We, we want to have more, uh, you know, more, uh, more uh, we, we want to be sure that, it, uh, we, that it's, it, it's cat. So we, we, we want that, that cat will be much more than other distributions, scores. And the, we have some special functions, special, uh, special loss functions that will do it. Okay? I see. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. So it's actually recall on multi-class SVM. Again, I do it really briefly. I don't want to uh, uh, emphasize on this. So we have loss function, we have uh, regularization, uh, data loss, generalization to multi-class, take, taking all the options that are not uh, the right class, and we want to minimize it, of course, because we don't want detections from the other classes when we want to classify it. Okay, uh, so and we uh, change and we update the gradient respectively. Okay. Softmax. Softmax is uh, actually it's one of the uh, uh, important layers that we have in neural network. So Softmax is actually Can I ask something about the SVM. What? Can I ask something about the SVM? Sure. Basically, if, if we'd ask the same question, we just asked about the cats and dogs uh, about the SVM. So. The, the feature of this uh, algorithm uh, is that it will increase the gap even if it's right, right? Yes, 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 no. yes, you're right. So the feature of this, the, it's, it's, the, the feature of this algorithm that, that, that it, also if it's right, it will uh, enlarge the gap, okay? But it's have another, other, other, other problems again, I, I, a little bit problems about SVM, it's SVM uh, and this, uh, in this in, in this way it works only on the uh, linear separable data yeah and if you want to 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 
to classify nonlinear separable data, you should do some, it's, it's called kernel trick, or uh, you, you, you should define that uh, actually, you, you should add some nonlinearity, okay? Or actually to uh, do more high dimensionality, like if you have nonlinear separability, you should uh, up, uh, up sample to the manifold, to the dimension or manifold that there you can define the, the, the uh, linear separability of the, of the of the data. Okay, I am not going uh, actually. I'm I'm all, I'm not going to talk about it more because SVM specifier are not uh, actually out, out out of the scope. But but you should aware about the option that you have an option also with SVM use uh, uh, to cl to classify non uh, non linear separability separable data. Okay, but SVM have uh, one, of the, one of the people, one of the uh, huge the bottlenecks, uh, uh, the pitfalls of the SVM is the aware of, of actually sensitivity for the upper. Okay. okay, softbox, softbox. So for, from, from actually what we, we started, we see before that we, we saw uh, that we have scores. So now we want that this course will translate to probabilities, okay? So we want to work with probabilities and this is actually what, what, what our uh, softmax will do. So softmax, softmax will, uh, will, will, work, will respond of all our function in the vector of probabilities. So we uh, actually take, actually we take X, uh, e, uh, X of F1 and uh, we normalize it uh, for, you know, for, for having one. Yeah, so it's not, we normalize our, our, our value. So the entries are from zero to one, okay? And uh, if, input, if one of the inputs is much larger than others, then the corresponding softmax value will be more large, will be close to one, yeah? F, because, you know, because relatively it's, he's, it's higher than others, so it should be uh, strive to be one, and the, the others will be should to be zero. zero and we want we, we will want actually that we will happen. We, we we because we want that we will distinguish how how far how, uh, we, we want to distinguish our class uh, with higher probabilities that we can. Okay, because if we have two classes that that actually we you know we have it, as as you mentioned before have the same score. We will have a problem with the distinguish. How how do you distinguish them? Which which class to give the 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 prediction? Okay. Okay. So so we have some numerical stability problem with the the, the softmax because e in you know we have x, x here. So when it's very large numbers, it's actually can uh, uh, it's uh, can uh, you know very large large number can uh, vanish and uh, 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 ex ex explode the gradients can can be exploded so it's it's a problematic so uh, what we actually uh, do for 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 uh, that it will not happen we actually adding this. Uh, some uh, regularization, I call it like log k. So it's uh, it's constant that, that we add for actually keeping the, the normalization of each of each of each of the entries that we will not explode. Okay, so we can let log k to be the maximum number that is actually our maximum uh, value, and for if, we, if we will subtract this value from for for each classes, we also we. we we, it will give us right cor the correct pre pre prediction, and will uh, uh, actually uh, it will improve the, the stability, the numerical stability of uh, how to calculate the, the gradient of, of the softmax. Okay, so softmax and sigmoid for of, of, for two classes. So this is actually our softmax. So we have softmax of uh, f uh, with respect to, to w's and mi minus. Uh, F with respect to W's. So, uh, actually the, the, as we can see, the softmax is actually generalization of sigmoid uh, for when we have more than two classes. Okay. 
we have seen the, the before in this regression. Okay, so now actually I'm starting about ADAS, ADAS here, ADAS or GAD. Okay, so ADAS will, will, will ADAS asked me a question uh, that I will, uh, she, she asked me to talk about uh, different, the difference between post entropy, uh, uh, how, how uh, KL, Kalbrick Liber, uh, how KL is actually help us to minimize the, the loss. So I will, I will talk about this today in the lecture. So I will, she, she will know it after, she, she, she will view the, the lecture after that. So it's, okay, so cross entropy loss. So it's, we, we, uh, it's convectional, it's, not, it's common to use the negative log likelihood uh, with softmax, yeah? So uh, actually it's, it's log minus P uh, on the, the, con the conditional uh, distribution of Y dependent on, on X, okay? Or it's minus log of uh, our softmax. So this is can be, so how we can view it? So it can be viewed like it's cross entropy between the empirical distribution that we have C on classes depend on X, yeah? And the estimated distribution that we have on PW, okay? So, uh, and uh, what we want to do, we, will, we want to minimize, actually, we want to minimize the cross entropy. Minimizing the cross entropy is actually to it's equivalent to minimizing the uh, kullback lebert divergence or distance, yeah? So again, we are talking about, uh, now we're talking about what, 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 what we mean about, uh, what, what, what it means. So take, so take an assumption that kullback lebert in discrete uh, presentation, it's actually, we want to, we, we're taking two distributions and we, 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 we want to minimize the difference between so we, we, we want to minimize the distributions of real distribution on the, on the classes that we have and, uh, as, and the, the empirical distribution that we have according to uh, our predictions, yeah? So we want to minimize these this two distributions to, to be aligned, yeah? And this means that you want to minimize the cross entropy between, between two distributions, okay? But you have what your, and the, if, if, if you have your, you know your your uh, uh, your one hot vector, okay? So one hot vector it means that you have one in in a place of uh, of your right class and zero in the other class. So you want to minimize the difference between uh, between this one hot vector to the really to the uh, uh, your correctly vector, okay? So this is the the, the, the really uh, your your real label, okay? So again, minimizing cross entropy between the, 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 the these two the distributions of predicted and correct, and minimizing Kuhle uh, Lebert is actually the same distance. Uh, minimizing the Kuhle Lebert distance. Any questions about this, guys? Is it clear? Oh, raise hand. Yeah, please, 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 please talk. Hi. So Hi. in the lecture, in the slide seven in the lecture, he talked about the uh, pointwise loss term. Mm -hmm. um, regarding this uh, cross entropy loss. Mm -hmm. And I didn't understand from his example, uh, the uh, derivation. Um, can you open it? Okay. Uh, do you see? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so uh, yeah. um, just one, one moment. Yeah, so in this uh, derivation, he Okay, I see, of course. He takes the, the, the minus log, okay. It's, uh, yes, it's, uh, and now he, he takes a specific i, like one sample, mm -hmm. and try to look on the pointwise loss term over yeah. here. And he yeah. says that uh, instead of y transpose, it's supposed to be pi, uh, pi transpose, um, just a typo. 
And, yes, it, uh, it's yeah, yeah. I know it's a typo. Yeah. But when he opened the vector multiplication, the the vector uh, multiplication, mm -hmm. he he sums all the elements, while a pi it's a one hot vector. You're right. So it shouldn't be any sum over here. It's just supposed to be only one. Yeah, it's discrete. It's discrete, uh, of course. Uh, it's it's a discrete option. It's uh, when you it's it's not continuous. Yeah, you have a one, one hot vector here. So yeah, so one hot vector. From my understanding, it's a, a zeros with only one. Yes, a, again, a somewhere, one, right? Of of course. And then you have you want to minimize. Uh, let's trying to 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 you know to assume it, to to imagine it. It, it you have. One hot vector of your real prediction, and you have one hot vector on your on your uh, on your predicted on your classified prediction. Yeah, that you that uh, empirical uh, uh, empirical uh, uh, re result. So you want to minimize their difference. Yes. Okay, so I, I you, just don't don't understand how uh, do he get uh, sums of uh, this multiplication. Like this, how this is equal to this. I don't understand it. I think most of them will be, will just be zero. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, but it's okay, it's a general case. No, 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 it's a general case. It's, you're taking, of course, most of them will be zero. It's, it's a general case for, for uh, okay. So it's a general it's case. So, so it's only one element that's not zero, right? In this, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, again, what? No, oh, okay. Finish that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Again, as I, as, I, as I explained before in my in my uh, example, it's, it's the same. Yeah, it's only have one in the in the in the same in the in the, in the entry in the specific entry of the of the one hole. Okay, thanks. Okay. Can yeah. I ask another question about this? You you, you ask about about what I'm showing or what? Uh, uh, pretty much the said the one with the logs and the cross entropy. So okay, so uh, uh, so let me okay one minute. Let me let me to screen something. Ah, okay. So on this one or okay, let's let, ask here. I don't. I don't it's mind. regarding the same, the same subject. Okay, uh, so yeah, yeah. To, please talk. So you say we want to minimize the difference. We want to minimize the difference, yes. But I don't see we, in the formula the, the difference part. So you see a multiplication between two results. So yeah, so the definition would be to maximize this, but I, I apparently I don't understand something. No, no. OK, so, okay. so you have two distributions. OK, uh, you have two distributions, yeah? You want to, to feed them. The uh, distance, the difference, it's actually, dif 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 it's, it's uh, uh, we decided, uh, we define it like distance, it's the actual distance of the means of, the, of these distributions, okay? So okay. you have some distribution and you have, this, and you have other distribution and you want to, to feed them that they will be aligned. They will be aligned, uh, take an assumption that it, it's some, you know, some, Gaussian distribution or yeah. approximately Gaussian distribution. So you 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 want to do that the distance between the their means will be and the you have mean and, and the and sigma, yeah? So you want to, you know, you want to feed them. So you want to, to minimize the distance between the, the parameters that define your distribution. So yeah, so how do I getting, see so the getting okay, one minute I will try. So getting okay, okay. getting the same distribution. In our case, when we are talking about, it's like actually, it's this, okay, so one minute I will, let's, uh, I will uh, uh, share my screen and we will continue talking. Okay, yeah, so, okay, good. So, and uh, what I mean that, okay, so it, it is, if we talk with respect to Kubek uh, Lebesgue, so we want to minimize the distance. Minimizing distance, it means by, by cross entropy is that we actually, your prediction, your predicted class 
or your prediction distribution of the class is the same of, of your real, real dis distribution of the, of, the, of the class. So minimizing the loss cross, the minimizing the cross entropy, it means that, that you actually minimize the, you, that you want that all, all time you will, you know, you will uh, get the, the, the right class, then your loss will be zero. Yes, that I understand. I don't understand how the formula that uh, multi the multiplication between both uh, distribution, one of them with log, how is that minimizing? One minute. I, don't, I think that I have. Okay, so you, you're, you're, you're talking about uh, the real uh, example of uh, of the numbers and how it minimizes it? Uh, I guess just if I have this, the so this example is possible uh, distribution, how does, uh, let's say, the real one, uh, you multiply it with the log of the second one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have, so again, let's, 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 uh, okay, so I, let's try to, to see it here. So you have the you you have your loss. So your your your, your loss is on y with respect to Q, to your inputs, uh, dating the the, the W the, the parameters. So it's we 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 it, again we talked about before. So it's like a negative likelihood on distribute on condition uh, on condition on distribution of y depend of on 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 x, and it's like minus log of taking taking uh, uh, your specific class, yeah, by, you're, you're taking here your specific class and by normalizing your, all the classes that you have, yeah? And what you want to minimize, the, you want actually that, you know, that the, the, you want to minimize it, you, you want that it, it will fit your, here in the, in the in, in, here it will be actually your real class. And the other options when your, your cross entropy is more than zero, in, it means that your predict your class is not predicted right, and then you can distance depends on you know of how far you of your real distribution. Okay, yeah, I think I got it. I got it. Yeah, so you have so so you understand that cross entropy is actually how you far how far you from your predicted distribution. Yeah, from your yeah. predicted class. So and, and you want to to minimize the the, the distance of your uh, of your distribution of your of your of your real class to distribution of your empirical class okay i see great very good so okay so this is actually so this is a gradient uh, how we uh, calculate our gradient with respect to output and with respect to the parameters the, the class parameters okay great so uh, again, so gradient with respect to, to y is actually uh, the, the conditional distribution minus one on xi, and if you your gradient uh, on uh, your class when your classes are not equal to yi, which is actually the conditional distribution of class depends on, on xi, and the update rule is actually will be the same. Okay, so now we have, after this slide, we will have two minutes to go. So let's see on some example of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, calculating loss. So we have matrix multiple, so we, we will take two, two different uh, loss. So uh, the first one is uh, cross entropy loss and the second one is hinge loss. So you have your matrix, you have, we have here three three classes. Yeah, the correct class the correct class is the is the blue one. Okay, blue one is the correct class. So uh, what we are taking? So we we are we actually have here. This is our values minus two minus uh, two zero uh, dot eight and zero dot two, and we have loss. And we calculate loss, so, so it's, it's maximum between the hinge loss, yeah. So we have number. Why this number is uh, more than, than zero? Guys? Why the loss is more than zero?
What do you think? Um, is it because you misclassified? Why? Because you misclassify? Yeah, of course. I misclassified. Why I misclassified? Because why? Why? Why do you think that I'm misclassified? Well, the green score is higher than the blue score. Of course. Is everybody agree, uh, agree with uh, with us? Okay. So you misclassify here because the maximum score that you that your predict that your classifiers is give is for the uh, green entry. Doesn't true because we know that the correct label is a, is a blue one. So we have loss. This loss should be minimized. Okay. And the same one is happened with the cross entry velocity. So for this for the given for the, the same uh, for the same uh, mat, mat, for the same parameters. We have two different number of laws, but it doesn't matter, of course. So I, this is what I wanted to show you. It doesn't matter what we have. That that this is this. Uh, so uh, uh, it, the nomin nominal value of your loss it don't really matter. Okay. So if the uh, uh, cross entry loss is uh, uh, it's a hinge loss is higher than what so softmax loss. But it doesn't matter. It, de it depends on the properties of the loss. What we see here is the loss before any iteration, before the learning. Yeah, no, it's 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 uh, during the training. Yes, it's loss that you got. You don't know, but uh, you know you you are now in the uh, in the you know in the in the in the, in, in the process. You are training. Yeah, it's not the final result. No, it's not the final result. Okay. Maybe yes, maybe not. Ma ma maybe it's the final result. I don't know. Maybe maybe I can do do better. It I can so I this uh, again these numbers are not are, are, it's, uh, are not giving me some uh, uh, intuition. Okay, I don't know. I don't really know if I can do better or not. It depends. We will we will see uh, how we know when uh, when to you know when to stop. I don't know if I need to stop or no. But it's actually what it was. Uh, this is the result of the given epoch. Okay, I don't know what if if I can uh, if the training process is st stop if I can uh, uh, minimize more. I don't know from this uh, from only taking uh, these numbers. Okay. Okay. Is it clear to anyone? Yes, it's clear. Thank you. Sure. Great. So. We talked about losses. It's great. Now we we talked about losses and we talked about multi. Uh, we talked about difference between multi-class uh, between training multi-class and, tra and training uh, independent cl cl classifiers with with uh, their own hypothesis hypothesis on the give on the specific class. Now we will talk about training itself. So about the hyperparameters, bias variance trade-off. So this is actually what, uh, how to train model, how how we can uh, uh, how we can uh, re reflect, how we can how we can uh, actually uh, understand if we can do better or to, or uh, what the trade-offs of our process. So of course, we we have uh, two two basic trade-off. Uh, it's bias variance trade-off. So. Uh, Let's let's take a see on the on the simple multi-layer network. So we we have we have input. One minute. We have uh, hidden layers. We have a few. In this example, we have two layers and we have output. So uh, we can change these parameters. Yeah, you can change. You, you can add more more layers uh, from the input to the output. Uh, we will talk about what we what the intuition behind. So this is. Uh, let's take a look. So uh, this is actually uh, when we have three hidden layers. We, you, you, when you can see, uh, this is three hidden layers from the input to the output. We, you, we can see that we classify here uh, good, but uh, when we add more layers, we make more better classification. We found the margins of our distributions in better way. Okay. Again, we have some bottlenecks. I will talk about you. We can. Add uh, unlimited number of layers. There are problem with this. 
but uh, for now we 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 are neglecting this problem okay understand so far so far so good so far so good so far so good great so uh number okay so uh, behind, uh, besides the, the the number of layers that we can, uh, this is our hyperparameter. We can uh, we we can also uh, control uh, our regularization. Yeah, I talked about regularization. That's actually our uh, what we uh, it, this is our uh, uh, that's what we uh, regularize our parameters. So uh, this is a, a heavy regularization, and this is a very small regularization. So as you can see, when you add more and more regularization, you, you see uh, more simple uh, hyperlines, okay? So when you add more and more regularization, your, your hyperlines is more and more linear, beha linear behavior. So from the one, it's, so linear hyperline is like, you know, it's very uh, easy to distinguish between two hyperlines. But the, but uh, so the smaller the bigger the higher regularization give your model small bias, uh, sorry small variance, uh, but big bias. Okay. So what I mean so, so I mean uh, I mean that uh, you actually predict uh, you, you, your prediction from training and from validation all the samples seen and that seen samples have the same uh, accuracy have the same performance, but the 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 uh, quality of the accuracy are, are not so so good because you you uh, converge not for for very good uh, uh, numbers, but uh, for when you have smaller regularization, you have better results, but you have more variance. You have overfitting, I will, and we will talk about overfitting later. So the regularizations come to fight overfitting. And what is overfitting, you will see in a few slides. More parameters that, that are, uh, actually can, uh, we, 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 we can play during our training. So it's learning rate, schedule. So how the learning rate uh, during our training is uh, changed. If, 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 if it's constant, if it's decreasing, uh, what the numbers of samples that we can use for one uh, mi or, or mini batch, what number of the mini batches mean what number of samples that you do in, in parallel, that you, you do it, you uh, update the, the weights of them in, in, in the, in the one, uh, one epoch. So, okay, so not one, one epoch, but what I mean here, so in, you update them in one, uh, in, uh, one uh, iteration, okay, of course. Okay, so this is actually the bias uh, bias trade-off. So first, we want to make the more. Uh, it's actually both of these parameters are uh, they are uh, uh, define the generalization of our uh, of our algorithm. So bias is actually error due to simplification of our model. Then we want to. To, to make the model more simple, simple we uh, have more more bias, and the variance it means that uh, you uh, when you minimizing the variance it means that you minimize that you are not uh, uh, that you are actually uh, not uh, that you are not depend on uh, this on the specific samples. So you you can your uh, you 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 seen it in the the Alex lecture about the sample uh, in and sample out uh, uh, sample out so your sample in sample out have the same accuracy okay and you have the trade-off between them so high bias and low variance this is we can see here because uh, high bias uh, it means that we in most cases we predict well and the uh, low uh, and we have here also low variance because our variance is uh, very small here we have low bias, by, but high variance in this case. Okay, and, and this one is actually a trade-off between them. Okay, so underfitting 
It means that our training and test error are both high. Overfitting, yeah, model, it means that you are, underfitting, it means that you are tra trained not good. It means that uh, your training, your, you should uh, change your training schedule. Uh, most can be uh, accused because you, you're sick. Your uh, you have not you are not give enough data. Your 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 classifier can cannot distinguish really from the from your data uh, by the approximation that he do. The 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 model self can't give so good approximation. Overfitting, it means that training training error that the the uh, the, the data that you are uh, learned during uh, during training is uh, you, you do good good job you have a very small error good accuracy but on tests that you do on unseen data you have very high error okay so here we do overfitting because as you can see we distinguish very good the all samples during training but uh, during inference uh, you will see you, you will have the, the problem because you too depend too uh, because you fine tuned your parameters for uh, too much for the for the uh, for the uh, data distribution that during the training so unseen data that have some another distribution will uh, give us very high error so you should have, make some uh, trade offs so so here we have underfitting because you, you, you have a lot of samples that you actually misclassify. And here we have good trade off because we, most of the case, most of the samples you, you, you classify it good and uh, you also, uh, it's, it's more general. So it means that the, the validation will, uh, error will be uh, good uh, also, small. So how, how we can see it. So this is the, the, the training error and this is the test error. So which of the cases now we, we, we see what is uh, underfitting, overfitting, uh, good, good Over training, fitting. what? Uh, Over overfitting. Yes, of course it's overfitting. Why, why it's overfitting? Because the training error is uh, Converge to good num to very low numbers, but the test error you can see that's a very large gap. Okay. Yes, thanks. Sure. So, how the training set size is uh, uh, depend on the, our our results. So, as you can see here. From the from when we have many training examples, we actually can uh, we are we are going to converge to, to uh, good results, and we, when we have few training examples, we cannot generalize. So you 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 cannot mo learn model that will fit that for all the samples. So each time you are not uh, your gradients are not uh, sufficient. Okay, because you, you, you don't see the real distribution. You can't really approximate the, 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 the distribution of the, of the, or the real distribution of the classes. So you diverge. Your gradients are not really reflect the, the real loss and the losses going, going up. Is it clear, guys? Some feedback? Again, why would it go up, not just uh, okay. Okay, less okay, down? Let's you, you, see. You're talking about here. So if you have, a, so here you started uh, the red line, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so the red line is actually, uh, this is the, uh, this is a, a curse when you have small, very small training set size, okay? So the training side, the, the samples that you train are not really represent the parameters of your of your uh, training side of your data of your data set. So learning these these samples are not enough for 
for uh, for 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 a pre for a right prediction. So your your gradient, your baking rule, your gradient will not uh, you will not uh, converge to you you will not minimize the loss. Okay. It seems like you will maximize it, even because it goes up. No, 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 maxi no. Go, goes not up. maximize, but uh... goes up. It means that your error is goes up. If error goes up. It means that you're not converge. You're diverge. Your function is diverge. You cannot. You are not uh, getting your uh, error less by finding the the approximation of your uh, the, the right approximation of your model. But you can you 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 know your you it's actually your your gradients are again it means that your gradients are not giving the, the right so you, we have the curve of the optimization curve yeah so you are not going to the maximum to the mini, minimum or maximum of, of the yeah. of the function you are not it makes it worse what it makes the it makes it worse of course it, yes okay. of course it makes it worse it. it it's not always going up. It it can be on the same, uh, you know. It it's it's not should going up. Okay, it can be on some, you know. It's going to be from here. It's going to be constant. Yeah, but it means that it's not go. It's not. It's not really going to to converge. You are not going to find the appropriate uh, parameters for approximate your uh, function. Yes. Okay. Because again, it, it happens because your data that you feed it's not enough to uh, to, to uh, really understand the behavior the behavior of the distribution the, the real distribution of the of the of the, of the data set of the, okay. of the classes okay yes okay this is actually a generalization gap Okay, so we want to minimize it. Okay. Okay. So uh, we have uh, hyperparameter search in, in practice. So we iterate of, over uh, a range of hyperparameters, uh, learned parameters of training, measure accuracy and uh, validation. Uh, finally, we test uh, our model on, on test data, and we want to uh, make the gap, the the, the, the generation gap, as, as small as we can. By, uh, uh, give, by, by by making the good trade-off. So you want small train, small training error, and also small uh, as small as possible, uh, of, uh, as small as as, as, as uh, the gap between the, the test and the uh, and the error and, and the training will be as small as possible. Okay. Okay. So I'm not this not interested. Okay. So here we actually will have so uh, some uh, example of uh, calculation of gradients. So uh, behind linear predictors. So we want to achieve good accuracy on challenging problems. We need to be able to train nonlinear models. So why nonlinear models will when when linear nonlinear models when help us? What do you think? Why we should have nonlinear models? Why we need neural networks, guys? Why we need deep nonlinear hidden layers? Uh, sometimes we won't be able to give a good uh, a good network that's linear. Sometimes it might not be enough. Yeah. So when it's not be enough, when the uh, when your data is not. Linear separable, of course. Yes. Yeah. When you have separability of on the on of good separability of your data, you should not use a deep neural network. You can use simple simple linear model, as we have seen in, uh, in the first in today, and uh, this is uh, less complex, um, um, uh, more uh, computational friendly models. Okay. Can I have a small question, please? Of course. If my um, training set is uh, is linear, but actually examples that I uh, will test my uh, that I will have test with are not linear. Ah, 
Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 So I, I I didn't talk about it, but 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 you 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 have some assumption about your test data set. Okay? okay. So the the assumption that you you have your the parameter, yeah, the parameter it's all the all space or or all space. So we okay. we sample. We do some. We we do sampling. Well, mm -hmm. and we we sampling the data and then we divide it synthetically to uh, training and the the test set. We have some uh, assumption about the distribution of that. Okay. okay. Thanks. Of course, we we uh, they have, we assume that they sample from the same distributions. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Otherwise, it would not work, of course. Or you, you need to do more, more uh, uh, sophisticated training for for distinguish it. Okay. Okay. So great. So tra traditionally, we have shallow approach. We have raw data. We have complicated feature transformation. Uh, then we do some simple classifier, and we get label. Uh, so shallow pipeline is actually non-linear SVM, as, we talk, as, I, as, as uh, I talked before, and the polynomial kernel. Again, I will I, I'm not talk about it, but polynomial kernel is actually give us option to 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 to, to work with non-linear functions. Okay, so it's uh, our up sample trick, uh, and we can actually perform a non-linear non mapping inducing by kernel function, uh, and we can have actually apply it uh, to our classifier, okay. Uh, other, other options, you have two-layer neural networks that you have uh, in input and hidden layer and the output, okay. But, uh, but here in hidden layer, we applied a non-linearity on them. So we first count, calculate the outputs and then we applied non-linearity for uh, before, so it's like non it's like transform, we do some transformations. Okay, yeah, we, this is output, this is ma ma matrix with outputs, and then we have G, we applied non-linearity. We, why do we need the non-linearity? Yeah, so I, we, we talked about for, for finding more complex relations, of course. So common non-linearities that we use in neural networks, uh, it's sigmoid, tanh, and ReLU. Uh, so, Relu is most common nonlinearity when we talk uh, when we uh, talking about uh, convolutional neural networks. Uh, sigmoid and tan tanh are more used in the recurrent neural networks. I will talk about it later. Why or why they're uh, again? It's it's more complex. Sigmoid and, and tanh are more complex to to to, cal to calculate functions. Yeah, but the gradients here you have more sensitivity because Relu is your you, you, you're because you know, uh, because really works like maximum between zero and x. So you have here, uh, you know, uh, the gradients. You you have here the uh, the area that the gradients are not so accurate. Yeah. Okay, but uh, because it gives us good trade off for convolutional neural networks between the uh, complexity and the, the converge of uh, the function, we use really. We have some more addition on ReLU. I will talk about it later. Peer, uh, some functions, some some ReLU with some uh, you know ReLU with uh, some additions. So peer ReLU have some uh, actually uh, also values here in the, in the negative uh, side. Okay, but again we will talk about it later. So let's talk about uh, hidden layer perceptrons and the, and this combination of. Uh, for inputs followed by non-linearity. So again, I'm talking about, so, so this is actually give us a universal function approximator, yeah? Uh, but I, you, we, we, we should have a, a lot of, uh, a huge neural uh, hidden layer. Okay, so when we have more than two, two layers, so we, we have a deep, deep more than one hidden layer, it means that we have deep pipeline. So we have one layer, and then the uh, it's uh, we the output is the input for the next layer, and etc. Okay. So we what is actually what is actually going on? 
uh, we assume that what we are doing when we have few layers, that we learn actually the feature hierarchy of uh, our, our, our data. So uh, if we actually uh, have a picture, so we think that uh, we, in the first layers, we extract features that more uh, low, low levels, more fundamental features, like if I have, uh, you know, I have a picture of, uh, uh, let's see, I don't, I don't know, I have, uh, uh, I, I have, I have, I have person on the, on the picture. So first you le you learn his you know the the contours of the of the uh, you, you you learn the contours of the of the person and the most uh, most uh, uh, it's the low extraction it's happened in the first layer and, and and in the more deep layers we learn more smaller details about I don't know eyes or mouths okay good questions is it clear. Right? Yeah. Good. Okay, so let's, I want to, I, I, I will show you some brief example. Yeah, so as, as we can see here, so it's actually, uh, we can see here a few options. So uh, uh, it's a great, uh, uh, great uh, sites that you can uh, play with uh, the functions and and uh, and to see how to how the learning rate activations and other stuff are uh, actually uh, depends on uh, on our trade on our training. So first we let's see about the data sets. So if we take this the, the data set and we take like I don't know learning rate it doesn't matter. So let's take some some linear function. Uh, and let's define some learning rate. So let's start the training. Let's let's do it more. Okay. Okay. So what what happens here? The test loss and the, what, what about our training loss? Guys, why our training loss is? Hmm? So we have it, two. This is not that good. Yeah, it's not good. Yeah, of course, because we can because we have no. Uh, we cannot distinguish, yeah? So, so and the, let's try with some, uh, uh, I don't know, let's take an age and here. Okay, so what it means? What, 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 what we have seen here? We have no linear, we take the data, yeah? This is our da 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 data set. And we tried to learn it with uh, uh, perceptron without, uh, with linear uh, activation, without, yeah? So, and we got that we cannot distinguish between the, 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 that set, between, between, between the class, okay? It means that we can learn it. But th then we can, I add a, a, a non-linear activation, and I can see that uh, I can, uh, I can learn to classify these two classes, okay? Have you seen it? The layer of the four neurons is the linear functions. What? The the layer of the four neurons, the first layer. Yes. Again. Yeah. What What do you mean the uh, linear? Yeah. This one. This one. Yeah. No. No. You have. Okay. So. So activation. So activation. After all, each layer you have active. You have nonlinear activations. So first you do multiplication between W and the and the input. Yeah. The input. Yeah. Output. And then you applied on this. You applied your. Uh, you applied your. Uh, the output will be the uh, nonlinear function on on the, the the transformation on the on your calculated uh, values. Okay. Okay. So yeah. now, so this is actually this. Uh, 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 
uh, this uh, example can uh, uh, give you intuition uh, about uh, why non-linearity helps uh, to uh, for the training process of uh, non-linear data data separable uh, data sets. Okay, of course. The other, the, uh, the other way to, 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 to do it is to add some more sophisticated uh, features, like, uh, I don't know, like dependencies uh, by uh, this one or this one. And uh, you, you actually can see, one minute. Yeah, so this is uh, still not works, of course. And if you are using sigmoid or other ones, it's actually more features, actually more, more uh, information about your data. Uh, it's help you to converge better. Okay, again, so I will give, give it an options to play with this, of course. And you will have an, uh, your uh, also in the networks, but it's actually a small one and uh, you can uh, give, see, see the, the, the difference here. Okay. Let's continue. Okay, great. So, how to train a multi-layer? So again, we have inputs, we have first layer information, uh, transformation, then we have hidden presentation H, and then we have et cetera, et cetera, until we are going to output. Output, we have E, or e and we need to find the, the gradient with respect uh, to with respect to uh, the parameters of each layer to our uh, to our uh, to our weights okay so we per perform the same update so we, our update is double key okay the next iteration will be uh, minus uh, learning rate and uh, the, this is our lo the loss function error of uh, the output with respect to the uh, parameters of the of the given layer, and it works. We will now have uh, some uh, example of the calculation. So computation. So this is actually computational graph. It means that we have graphed uh, uh, each of each, each of the parameters we have here. Yeah. So each of the parameters uh, are are learnable. So we we are de derived from the end to the to the uh, first layers. Okay. So let's start. So we use chain rules from the uh, uh, calculus for uh, finding the, 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 the gradients. So the first one we we are we are we 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 want to uh, calculate the gradient of e with respect to uh, to w to uh, w one. So for, we can do it because we can we we have, we, we, we we don't have the direct uh, Connection, but we but we can derive it uh, 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 with respect to H one and H one we can uh, we can uh, derive it with respect to W one. Simple chain rule with K one, and then we can of course add more. Uh, yeah, so this is actually our calculations. Yeah, and for K two we do the, the same. Okay, so the function two is actually. More the we have, we, have, we have inner function of one so and then we can we we can actually do uh, now we we can compute the uh, uh, error the output with respect to h2 and h2 with respect to w2 etc okay in this in specific example, we assume that y is uh, one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So if you if you have no again, it's things that you should uh, have seen before. So if you have no questions, we will go to specific the example of calculation. Questions, guys. Is it clear until now? Yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. So in general case, again. So now we'll now we'll give you the example. In general case, uh, we are upstream our gradient when we can uh, comp compute 
for each of the the for each of the weights of of uh, our layers the calculations. So in further paths we have we are doing from this way yeah and in backward paths we are going that way from the function we are streaming our gradient with respect to the uh, previous uh, hidden layer and we have already we have also our local gradient so local gradient is uh, uh, hk with respect to wk okay so this is not to throw the propagate it can be fixed gradients are, are can be calculated uh, in parallel yeah why they can be local gradients uh, calculated in, in parallel Anyone? Why the local because gradients? The, the functions are independent. Yes, the because the function is, the, the, is independent, because we don't need to wait until we will calculate uh, the, uh, the gradients before. So, if, when, uh, so one of the so upstream gradients, we are actually uh, feeding our, our data from the output to input. So, we need the data, we need to understand what is we need to, to, to know what the calculations uh, was before yeah for 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 uh, and here we don't know we, this gradient can be already calculated okay so the parameter update we have so if it, so uh, e with respect to wk you have local gradients and you have upstreaming like gradient you have two gradients that should be calculated one is uh, you should wait for until he will be fitting and the second is already is 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 already is already known because you you did it once when you doing propagating you are calculating this parameter for each of your 1000 layers okay yes good okay so a few minutes, uh, for example, and we, we will uh, we we are about to end to to finish this lecture. So a detailed example. So let's uh, let's uh, assume that we have some some data, some uh, numbers. So this is our, our, our numbers. Uh, we you, we have two two uh, two uh, uh, feature two features and uh, two weights. Okay. So now we actually some have, have, have some flow. So do we here do the computations? Yes. Yeah, so it's, it's it's a basic. Yeah. So we are uh, we want to approximate this function. Okay. So this is uh, really this is our function. So it's really easy to approximate. And then we have result. Once we have result, we want to. Okay. Great. We have result. So the the expect value is that, that we calculated is zero uh, is uh, zero dot, dot seven and uh, and the, the, the real is one so we have lost we should grad we, we should to update our our weights to accordingly yes is it clear yes yes okay very good okay so now we will start as, a, as we learned before, some of them we can, okay. Some of the, we are doing now, now doing the, up, the upstreaming stuff. We have upstreaming gradient, the one, and we have local gradient. So this is the radiation and this is the result. And now we updating this one. And now we have uh, the upstreaming gradient parameters. Now we can, of course, uh, to to do to uh, calculate the input of this one of of the previous with respect to the uh, to uh, to the to the next gradient. So now we can. This is one is upstreaming. This is local gradient. Now we can calculate this one. Yeah, and now. The same, etc. We are calculating the gradients, doing the updates. Each one 
one of them is uh, uh, one of the updates are uh, known, and the second we are feeding for, for all over the network of our computational graph. Once they finished, yeah, we have a few more steps. Okay, now we have you, 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 we have the, all the gradients updates. We know the gradients with respect for, for our parameters. And now we can update our W0 and W1. This is our network parameter. Yeah, so W0 and W1 will be W for the second, uh, from the previous step minus the learning rate, of, uh, st the step size multiplying the uh, gradient. This is, what. is it clear, guys? Are those numbers are the learning learning rate or the gradient value? The gradient value. Okay. Okay. Of course. Uh, once I have it, I I can uh, just apply it to the simple function and, and know that the, and know how to update. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after we yeah so. First, we, we finished here. So once you know the gradient, you know the update rule, you will uh, minimize your loss by updating the weights, uh, your, 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 your weights for the next, iter the next iteration. Okay, so today, first I done, today we, uh, a, br a brief summary, today we, Overviewed linear models, nonlinear models. I show you do you uh, uh, multi-layer uh, nonlinear models. Uh, we talked about over, we, 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 we talked about variance trade-off, uh, variance and the bias trade-off. Uh, when the trade when we see the good trade-off and when the trade-off is not good, and we should uh, change, uh, make uh, regularization more. Uh, 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 or higher or smaller depends what you, what you what you what you got what you have uh, we have seen uh, update uh, how to calculate uh, gradients uh, during back propagation of the function uh, actually and in this uh, lecture we covered all uh, the basic materials and uh, including perceptrons that you should know until uh, talking actually uh, until uh, this is the all materials that, that until convolutional neural networks. Next lecture, my lecture will be on convolutional neural networks, uh, different types uh, of them, and uh, we will talk about the most uh, interesting, most uh, uh, common architectures uh, of and how they work. Uh, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, the lecture will be uploaded via our web course. And if you have no questions, please ask me now. I, I have. Could the slides be uploaded as well? Slides already uploaded. Again, oh. the slides is already in our web uh, in 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 the, in, the, in, the, in our uh, uh, official uh, uh, website uh, under its lecture three B. Okay. Thank you. See you next lecture. See you next lecture. Bye, guys. Thank you very much, Colin. <laughs> You're welcome.